Hello and welcome back to 3 Day Weekend. We are with the Pro XP working on a series of making it warm inside because it's winter in upstate New York and it's cold and I don't like it. So we've added heat in a previous episode. Now we've added the full tip out windshield and now we're going to do something about the doors. So let's do it. Upper doors. I got the genuine Polaris ones with the hard frame, but you can roll down the window if you so choose. So we're gonna get those out. Let me read the instructions real quick and see if we can get them installed on this machine. You know, just as I stopped the video, I realized the fan's still there. I'm bleeding the system still from uh, the heating system we've added. Uh, I had to cut it open and everything, so I've been bleeding it run it up the temp, letting it cool back down. You also notice I have random lights and mirrors hanging because the new stuff won't let me mount them as they were. So once I get the uh, doors up, we'll revisit how those are gonna mount and see what I can do about it. I have reviewed the instructions and depending on what you're doing with the doors, there are different instructions to follow. So there's one if you have the aluminum doors, there's one if you have just the inserts with the plastic doors, and there's one where you have the plastic doors with the inner lower doors. I have the inner lower doors over there in that box right there, that big box right there. So you kind of install that at the same time that you install this, because the two go together. Uh, so we're gonna take that method, but I'll tell you when we get there. Up until that moment, the instructions are exactly the same. And step one is we need to remove the door skin, which is 11 of these Torx screws in and around there. And I'll, and I'll probably have to modify the door for that thing. We'll see how that goes when we get there. So I'm gonna take this door skin off. And we're gonna remove the hood. Torx 40s on that. Next up, we have to remove this fender. Ugh. Lots of screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and a push pin. I think that's all. Got the fender off. You have to reach in. This piece wants to, oops, wants to stay with the machine. But it's got these little clips on it, so I just had to reach in, barely touch them with a screwdriver, and they pop free. I did end up taking this second screw out right here, and the second push pin down here to give me a little more wiggle room to get that out, and then I could see it. Uh, someone ran a bunch of wires through here, and zip tied them to rock lights. So I'm gonna have to reconfigure that because we have a piece of foam we're supposed to stick in there that I've lost. Here it is. From what I can tell, the passenger side one has a different cutout. See how it's got this big square edge there and this one doesn't. So that tells me this is the passenger side. It also has a couple pieces of Velcro, which this one doesn't have. That's interesting. Uh, and the uh, installation doesn't talk about that Velcro at all. So I imagine it lines up with a bar somewhere and you're supposed to stick it on. So that's where it goes. Velcro goes right up in there. So it sticks to the firewall. And then that one's going to stick in the fender, I guess. So I've got some alcohol here. Clean that up. Hey, buddy. He's so tired. He had a rough day of sleep in 23 hours yesterday, so he's got to catch up. Oh uh, yeah, we'll get that Velcro on there and put the fender back on. Must be, uh, there was a draft or something <laughs> coming through here. It's a lot of work to stick in a piece of foam. So now we get to put the fender back on. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with my rock light here. Fender is on. Now we get to do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, we have a couple little pieces of foam to stick under the hood. 
take those out. And these pop rivets out. So we can lift the fenders up. We're gonna slide them. Let's see. Looks like right on this line. In and in. I just checked, these pieces are identical. So direction's not gonna matter. It's just uh Looks like they're gonna go into about that far. Must be the hood seals on the rest of it. And we can reinstall our push pins and our screws. While we're at it, let's throw the hood back on. Okay, now no air could possibly get in through the nose. Looks like we're gonna be putting some sealant Double-sided, not double-sided tape, some sticky foam or whatever, right along this edge. So, got some isopropyl alcohol. Just gonna clean this up a little bit. I've placed the driver's side shroud where it's gonna go, about like that, so I can, well, put the seal under there. Keep it in place. There's the end result. That'll work. Could have gone up a little more on that front one, but it'll be fine. Now this next part is optional. I'm gonna go for it. It says to cut out this whole thing for a mirror. Um, there's a strap for the poly windshield that comes up to here, but I think I'm gonna trim where that box is, and I'm hoping this little arm will come out and hold that windshield, or that mirror, but I think I'm gonna end up cutting down and up just a little bit to make it fit through there. Well, I got it. It's a much bigger hole than I thought I was gonna need, but the mount will fit, like so. The second one went much better. I was able to measure from that one. It got it fit perfectly. So, with this aftermarket mirrors, I just had to go a bit lower. But it'll be fine. From this point forward, we're skipping ahead to the plastic door plus inner door plus upper door installation. That's a lot of stuff. Looks like we gotta modify the inner doors a bit. I've wanted the doors, I've read the instructions, and I'm pretty much gonna turn this into Swiss cheese. I have to drill seven three quarter inch holes every one of these little symbols. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and that goes up, and there's one couple up there, and all around. Three quarters. Those are pretty big holes. Oh, and also, right where these marks are, you drill three quarter holes on each end and remove everything in between, making two big slots for some reason. Yeah. Don't know what that's gonna be for. But, I'm gonna grab the drill bit and find out. Those are all prepped. It's our drilled over, very exciting. And it says the next step is to install them per the instructions that came with them. So, I'm gonna go grab them and start that. My main concern is if they're gonna clear this bar. I remove one screw and one push rivet. Probably the fifth time this weekend. And then it says, yeah, just slide the fender around behind it and you'll you'll be fine. There's no sliding anything behind anything. Oh. Slide it up through there. <laughs> Which one is the right one? It's this one. I think I'm gonna need to take a couple more screws off in order to get that in there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why they think that's gonna be enough. There, like that, all right. I see what they're getting at. Door. We're gonna 
stick one of these long bolts with a washer on it through that hole. And on the back, we're going to put a spacer on it. And then we're going to drop the spacer on the ground. I have an inner door here. We send a long bolt through the back side with a washer on it. I have a spacer and this little retainer thing. We're going to put the retainer in my socket. I'm going to slide this on. And then we're going to slide this on. Hold it so it doesn't go anywhere. And we're ready to put it on the door. There we go. ready to go. We're going to reinstall the outer door frame with a few bolts. Hold the inner door and hold it up to here. These uh, other bolts are T25. Of course they're not T40 like everything else. It's going to be next to impossible. We're going to leave this door as is for right now because we're going to be putting bolts through there. I kind of cheated and read ahead on the directions. So there's no sense in putting it all back together just to take it apart again. Um, I also pulled the seal off this door and now it clears my running board. It didn't clear before. And it touches a little bit right there. I'll probably put the seal on just the front edge. I could probably put something and stick it down on this that it'll meet up against if it is an issue, but we're gonna leave it as is for now. But the next step are the shrouds. I've already got this one loaded with the plastic straps. Send them in from the back side with the Velcro facing down. They go like this and like that. Fix the shroud with the three back Velcro strips and we use one screw with a washer, a little nut, this little clip that goes behind here and grabs onto the fender. Not too bad. Front shroud time. Let's show the people the hardware we're using. We got two nuts, two washers, two screws, the same screw we just used there, the little guys and two weird looking clamp things that come in bags. It's got a hook on one side. Let me get this lined up and bolted down. We're just finger tightening those for now because we're going to need to do some adjusting. We have the fronts finger tight, ready to go. Look at that beautiful install. And now we're going to be starting on the top, those front two holes there. We got them. You know, I keep saying on this job, which started with the heater, like, oh my gosh, that's the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. And then something else happens, and it's the most difficult thing we've had to do. And I tell you what, those ones are up there on the list. I had to pinch them. He had to send the, the nuts while I held it in position. That just did not want to go on. But now we're ready to get the door, the upper door, and hold it in place. So we had to make sure that this edge, the canvas was on the outside of the door, and then it could seat all the way down on there. Now we're putting on this bar, which is weird because it goes around the outside of the frame to hold it. Hmm. The door is on. And we torqued down the uh, shroud, once we made sure that all lined up, so it's pretty good. And now I'm wrapping the door skin and I'm trying to make it fit on here. There are three slots on this colored insert thing. They have to slide the door into, and then I pushed, 
that kind of popped right in this little seam all the way down. And the last step, I just need to get the, all these screws to line up for the outer door skin through the holes we drilled earlier, seven of them. And it looks like my little door opener guy is going to work. So yeah, we're going to time lapse this because this is just going to be a pain moving and pressure and trying to get the screws to start. Good times. It's done. This is the worst install on any mod I have ever done in the history of forever. Now, granted, I was prepared for the bars not to work. I said the bars weren't gonna work. Everything else should work just fine. And I'm telling you, it's, it feels cobbled together. In the end, it worked. And I was able to get my little uh, door assist piston in there. But the door, it just doesn't feel it doesn't feel good, and I got a gap in the door. Terrible. I'll be warm, but geez, I dread the day I'm going to have to take this off, you know, for summer or something. What a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. It'd be better to get different doors and just take these off and hang them somewhere and get different summer doors. Now I got to do the same thing on the other side. Terrible, terrible design. We did it. We got this door on. Oh man, what a pain in the neck. But yes, it's in, that's in. We got my double lot rear window installed. It's got a couple cutouts. Don't worry about those right now. That'll be a later video. We're gonna address those. But uh, yeah, it works. I did have to trim the bottom of the door and make it clear my Nerf bar, especially this one, which is bent slightly. But I got the seal on the front one. I got my mirrors on there too. Those are good to go. Uh, they don't really work that well. I could see this one, but that passenger one, can't see anything out of it, so. Now these doors are such, these upper doors are such a pain in the neck to install and uninstall that it is now permanent to this door. If I want to take them off, I will get different doors. Either somebody's takeoffs or an aftermarket solution that doesn't use the existing uh, frame because I do not want to take that door part ever again in my life. Oh, I forgot to mention my little auto opener things worked with the, uh, the inner doors. That's good to know. But yeah, with four bolts, the whole door comes off and I can just put a different summer door on there if I wish it to be more open for the summer. I rolled down the window. I don't know. Time will tell. Time will tell. So that's it for today's video. Just a lot of working on it in the garage. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate every viewer and every subscriber, especially you members. You guys are amazing and we really appreciate the support. Everything I do to any machine has its own playlist. If you like checking out what we're doing to those working on them, modifications, just check out those playlists. You can check them out at your convenience. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks again for watching, and I hope you'll join me here for another video on 3-Day Weekend.